Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I am Liz Brown Swanson, and thanks for joining me at the annual Prepared Peninsula Expo happening at Peninsula High School at the same time as the Farmers Market. This event is about bringing the community together to learn all about emergency preparedness and what we need to do to be ready. Hi everyone, it's Larry Mazelish. I'm chair of the Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee. And today I'm at the Peninsula Prepared Expo. And this is a public event. We hold it every year here on the peninsula. And it's important to remind the community, our neighbors, that we have to be aware of and be prepared for what may come at some point in the future, be it earthquake, wildfire, landslide, any other type of emergency incident. You want official information when you need to know what's going on in a timely manner. I certainly encourage people to come out to events like this, as well as right now, if you haven't done so, pull out your phone and text ALERT SB, that's Alert South Bay, so to speak, to 888-777. This will get you set up for the official emergency alerts here in Rancho Palos Verdes and the peninsula. So when something happens, you'll know what it is and what actions you need to take to ensure that yourself and your family is safe. So come on out to these type of events. It's a great community get together. You learn a lot. You actually have a lot of fun. You have some freebies you can take home. So I hope to see you at an event like this in the near future. One of the other benefits coming to a preparedness expo like this one is you have time to speak with city staff and the actual first responders, the sheriffs, for PVE police, they're here. The fire department, you have time. It's a relaxed situation, relaxed environment where you can ask questions uh, in depth. You see them as real people. These are our neighbors. Many of these responders live right here in our city. And you can learn all the details, what makes their job work, what makes it doesn't work. Answer all of your questions to learn what you need to do to help them do their job. It's, it's a great opportunity uh, to ensure that you're prepared here uh, in our neighborhood. Back when I was a kid, one of the things I grew up with, probably instilled by my family, was being involved in the community. As I got older through my teenage years, I learned about something called firefighting. And since that point, when I was a youngin, I've had a, a natural interest in in the fire department and fire operations. As I, that moves into my later life, still want to be a participant here in the community, I've taken that experience and I joined up with the Emergency Preparedness Committee a number of years ago. The committee is a group of seven residents. We aren't city staff people, we're actually residents who live here in the city. And we advise the city and the community on best steps, best practices of things that people should be doing to ensure that our city stay, uh, is safe, our residents are safe, our city infrastructure is safe, and we love to hear community input. Hello, my name is James Sprinkle. I am the newest member of the Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee. I am a 15-year veteran of the Los Angeles City Fire Department, and I have recently moved to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes with my family. I am interested in um, preparing the rest of the residents of the city to be prepared for any kind of emergency so they're comfortable and calm whenever that emergency happens. I really look forward to getting them all the information they need. Uh, feel free to reach out to the Emergency Preparedness Committee. Uh, you can find our email located uh, on the city website with any questions and we're happy to help prepare you in any way. As a firefighter, when it comes to preparedness, if you fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. And that's the most important thing, is to be ready for whatever emergency comes your way to make sure you are prepared and make the correct and right decisions that'll keep you and your family safe. Uh, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes is considered a very uh, high fire uh, severity zone. Uh, that means that the potential of a wildfire and brush fire uh, spreading throughout the community is very high. However, we can do things to prepare ourselves to stay safe during an event like this, if it should occur. We want to make sure that we have our homes, uh, homes hardened uh, to protect ourselves from the wildfires. And we also want to make sure that we know what to do in case of an evacuation. Uh, these steps will make sure that you keep yourself and your family safe. 
Hi everybody, uh, my name is Jesse Viapando and I'm the City of Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Services Coordinator and welcome to the ACE Annual Preparedness Peninsula Expo today. And what the Preparedness Peninsula Expo is, um, all four cities on the Palos Verdes Peninsula, they come together and we teach our residents how to be prepared for any type of emergency we might face on this hill. So first thing you're gonna need is water and that's um, one, wa one gallon per person per day for at least three days, if not a week. And I know that sounds like a lot, but um, next time you're at the grocery store, pick up an extra case of water just um, to store in your emergency kit. As well as you're gonna need some food, um, same as um, enough to feed uh, everybody in your family for at least three days, as well as and any other sort of things to make sure that you're comfortable after any sort of earthquake or emergency we may face. Uh, for people living on the peninsula, we're definitely more at risk for wildfires. The uh, Palos Verdes Peninsula is designated as a very high fire severity zone by the LA County Fire Department and Cal Fire. So what that means is that we're very susceptible to any sort of um, wildfire event here on the hill. And, you know, I ask that you, if we were to see any wildfire event, that you practice the LA County Fire Department's Ready, Set, Go program. So what that means is um, yeah, you get ready for an evacuation, you get set, and you go if, if we were to get that evacuation order. Well, one of the uh, great things we're um, looking forward to in the near future is um, the installation of wildfire cameras on the, Pal on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. So what that looks like, it's um, going to be about four different camera stations within the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, and they're going to be constantly monitoring for signs of smoke, indicating that there's a wildfire smoke and alerting our fire officials as needed. I started uh, my journey as emergency preparedness when I was 13 years old when I first took my community emergency response um, team class, also known as CERT. And just from there, um, the LA County Fire Department taught me the basics of how to be prepared. Then I, then I went to the nonprofit sector as well as the private sector. And now I'm in the public sector in emergency preparedness. I love it. It's my passion. This is this is one of my favorite parts of the job. It's just, just getting out there and just speaking the good word of how to be prepared for our, for any emergency to our residents and just really getting down there. And one of my favorite things to do is showing residents how to turn off their utilities during an emergency, which is a very important step as well. Accordingly, uh, the Palos Verdes um, Peninsula Public Safety Committee, which comprises of um, two representatives from each uh, peninsula city, we meet on a quarterly basis just to talk our uh, regional emergency preparedness efforts. So uh, on top of that, I'm always in communication with um, the various other emergency services coordinators on the hill for Rolling Hills Estates. You have Jessica, uh, Rolling Hills, you have Connie, and Palos Verdes Estates, you have uh, Merlin as well. Uh, the best resource to learn more is rpvca.gov slash emergency. So we actually live down in Hermosa Beach um, after living in the marina for about 10 or 11 years, so we're new down in Hermosa. Um, I, I saw a notice about the Hermosa Beach uh, FEMA CERT. Uh, program. So that was about two months ago. So I actually signed up and went through the eight-week course for um, the uh, um, uh, FEMA and its Community Emergency Response Team training. So I did eight weeks of that and uh, actually Merlin, who's the Community Relations Police Officer here in Palos Verdes, said, hey, I'm having this you know large group gathering for emergency services in October. You know, you should come down and check it out. There is quite a bit more here today than um, I think the CERT course covered. There's just a different department. So you have, you know, I saw Red Cross here, you have, uh, looks to be like a, a water rescue team and some other stuff. And so, you know, it gives you, a, I think, a larger knowledge base for the emergency response. I actually got a free backpack from the LA Fire Department. And it's just kind of a little bit of the content that they got in their class. And so she wanted to give me one so I could fill it up with my own emergency supplies. I'm William and I'm in third grade. This is my brother, Robert, and he's in second grade. Today we're learning about Fire, fire here on this wheel over here. Yeah. When you catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll. Yeah. Um, um, having a place a place to meet when there's a fire. Hi, I'm Christian Horvath with the City of Rolling Hills. Today we're here at the uh, Peninsula Expo uh, trying to help share a lot of the information that the City of Rolling Hills has put together as it relates to wildfire mitigation, uh, wildfire preparedness, and, uh, and we believe that all the information we have to share is uh, germane to everybody that lives on the peninsula. Some of the concerns and questions we get often are related to how do we prepare for a wildfire event? How do we prepare our properties uh, to ensure that we could potentially mitigate uh, wildfire spreading faster? And uh, so a lot of the materials and the videos that we have here today uh, specifically speak to that. My name is Merlin David. I'm the Community Relations Officer for the Palos Verdes States Police Department. And we are here at the Prepared Peninsula Expo 2022 
It's October 30th. It's at the end of your uh, month, so definitely make sure that you're prepared. We are asking everybody what they can do to stay prepared. Are you prepared? Do you have a plan? Is there a way that you can just grab something and go out the door? So that's our main concern right now. We have two sheets of paper here that gives you a list of things that you can grab and put in a bag so that when there's an emergency, all you have to do is grab those, get out the door. The other thing that we're trying to do in 2023 is to make sure that there is a bag that you have in your car. Uh, so if you're able to have that, uh, you'll be prepared for most uh, eventualities. Come on in, you guys. In. You guys want to come in? Come on in and get a little tour. There you go. Just watch your step. You can look around, just don't press any buttons. Okay. <laughs> that look yeah. important, yeah. right? Hi, I'm uh, Officer Hatch with the Palisade State Police Department. I'm a motor officer there. Um, what we're standing right now is a, uh, a mobile command center, and um, it's basically used for the South Bay agencies um, within our area. Um, this command center is a mobile command center. It's, it's basically a, um, a motorhome that's been converted to a command center. And I don't know if you've had a tour through here, but it's got all the necessary requirements, radios, um, televisions, telephones. We basically can communicate with all the agencies within our areas, um, and as long as, along with uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Um, this particular piece of equipment is stored and housed at Hawthorne Police Department. Um, it's available to all the South Bay agencies like Gardena, um, El Segundo, Hermosa, Manhattan, Redondo, and Torrance. Um, it serves a purpose of basically that, just a command center, so if we do have a natural disaster or mutual aid situation, we can use this and facilitate um, all the, the, the purposes of law enforcement. So it comes in really handy and also to come to events like this. The Scouts are all about be prepared and this is a preparedness expo. So we're here to check out all of the things that are going on and see if we can find some great tips for being prepared. I came today because um, I'm doing an emergency preparedness merit badge. I think it's really important to be prepared. Uh, we always keep water at home, we keep food at home uh, for our electrical appliances. Uh, we have uh, fire extinguishers that aren't water-based, that are powder-based. Uh, we have uh, ways to shut off the gas. We have uh, ways to shut off the water in case there was some kind of leak. Uh, we have a plan so we know how to get out of the house and actually during Cub Scouts we get everybody to draw a map of their home and to identify all of the exits so that they know if there was a fire or some other kind of emergency uh, they'd know how to get out of the building uh, while help was uh, on its way. We also teach everybody how to use uh, the telephone, how to dial 911 and the first thing we tell them is when you pick up the phone and you hear a, a 911 dispatcher the first thing you need to say is I need help. Hi, I'm Captain James Powers from the Lomita Sheriff Station, and we're at Peninsula High School today uh, for the Public Safety Emergency Preparedness Expo. And I'm here with my community relations team, who's not behind me right now because they're out helping somebody that needed some help. Uh, but we're here to talk about emergency preparedness and the importance of uh, planning ahead and preparing early and not waiting for the incident to happen. So the more that we can prepare ourselves for an ev event, the better off we'll be if and, if and when that event happens. And so behind me we have a narcotics dog. I'm not sure if you can see uh, the dog in the background, but it's a, it's a narcotic sniffer and I have a detective with his equipment here and he's been kind enough to help out and just to uh, show an example of some of the things that we do, uh, you know, in and throughout the community. So this event's always a very successful event. There's a variety of different agencies up here and we all work together and, uh, and when that mutual aid is needed we all come together and work very well together. So w w when an event happens and there's an emergency situation if you have done nothing to prepare yourself uh, we run the risk of you going into panic mode and we don't want to do that. So it's really really important that you, you practice and you train. I, I mean athletes train and practice all the time and they, and they practice for game day and emergency preparedness is the same thing and in law enforcement we, we we're trained daily, we train on a regular basis. And so when that emergency actually happens, we're, an example of being better prepared is we're calm and we're, we're relaxed because we're, we've prepared for this, we know what to do because we've practiced it out. And so for members of the community to do that, it's, it's important and valuable to prepare now 
because when it does happen, it'll it'll kind of come as just a normal routine type thing where you're going to know what to do because you've prepared for it. I always encourage you to see something, say something. You know, in, in any type of an emergency, you don't know what's going to happen or how it can happen. You know, and a great example of that is just a few minutes ago, my deputies were called away because somebody saw something. They saw somebody that was in need of some help, and they immediately responded. And as I'm talking right now, I can see the uh, there's paramedics in the background, and, and or not in your background, but in mine, and uh, they've rendered some aid to whoever needed it. And so that all goes along with the preparation. And somebody had the courage to speak up. They saw something that wasn't right, and if you see something that's not right, it's important to say something. So, well, we, we've got some color books for the kids, but uh, in the background we have a, a, a Sheriff's Department entry vest, and there's a weapon there, which is uh, MP5. Yes, sir, MP5. Can so it's, it's it's called an MP5, and it's it's a, uh, a it's a special type of weapon that's used uh, by our Special Enforcement Bureau, by our headquarters detective units, and you have to have certain special training and qualifications for that. Not anyone can carry that, but it's a, it's just a an example of the sophistication that we in law enforcement use on a regular basis. So with, it's, a, it's a, a little bit more of a more advanced entry vest as well uh, that, that allows them to have more equipment in high risk uh, situations. Uh, well, this is, a, this is a sheriff's canine and this is a detective from Narcotics, Narcotics Bureau. So this is a Narcotics Bureau canine and he finds handguns or rifles, any type of fired gun. His name's Neo, and he's nine years old. He's a Dutch Shepherd. Uh, he came from Holland, and we train them at the Sheriff's Department. We have our own master trainers, and he basically will be in service uh, probably about, mm, until he's about nine or 10. Hi, I'm uh, Sergeant uh, Tina McCoy. I've been at Lomita Station for about six years now. Um, the reason why we're out here today is just to uh, just give the word to the people here about being uh, prepared regarding uh, disasters and things like that. I have a, a disaster uh, kit that I have at home. I also have uh, canned foods uh, and foods that are ready in case a disaster occurs. I've talked with my family regarding um, just where we would meet at and things like that. Hi, my name is Jessica Slauson and I'm a management analyst with the City of Rolling Hills Estates. And today um, we're doing the Emergency Preparedness Expo, the Prepared Peninsula um, Expo 2022. Um, and really what today is about is having the Peninsula residents learn about emergency preparedness like wildfires, how to survive a disaster, and of course um, for our equine um, family here, um, what to do with your horses in the event of an emergency. Of course, we have to all be prepared for our families, but we have our pets, like you mentioned, and for our horses. What do you tell um, uh, the equestrian world out there what they need to do? Yeah. So um, for Rolling Hills Estates, we do advise um, our equestrian community to sign up for our emergency alert system. It's really specific to the equine community. So you would text a um, RHE horses to 888-777. Um, that way you're signed up to receive any type of emergency alerts. For you, you've been involved in emergency preparedness on the peninsula for years. Um, what are the takeaways that you want to share that will help us, incentivize us to become ready? Yeah. So I think one of the takeaways for me in um, talking with peninsula residents is being personally prepared. Uh, we get lots of questions about, you know, what, what is the city going to do? You know, where will the fire department be? Where will law enforcement be in the event of an emergency? And so I think we can explain that and we, um, of course, partner with those agencies for emergency preparedness. But what we'd like to emphasize is the personal preparedness side of things and really just to be ready to go. Um, lots of things learned out of the wildfires um, from our surrounding areas. Um, and so what the fire department is emphasizing is um, be ready um, and be ready to go immediately. Excellent. Anything you want to add? I mean, this is a partnership going on right now and an incredible opportunity for residents to meet the people with boots on the ground, the people that are out there helping to protect us. Yeah. Absolutely, um, and I'd definitely like to mention the partnership um, with the other peninsula cities, so Rancho Palos Verdes, Palos Verdes Estates, and Rolling Hills, and Rolling Hills Estates has partnered um, for this event for the past eight years. Um, included in that partnership is the school district, and I think they're a very big partner in emergency preparedness, so um, I think that collaboration for this event and getting the message um, across about emergency preparedness is, has been great year after year. Well, uh, my name is Brenna Torres. I'm the assistant superintendent for Palos Verdes Peninsula Unified School District. We're here participating 
and the expo today to create more awareness about our program here at the school district as well as all of our community partners and everything that they offer to the community. Specifically for us, this is our fall drill that we have. So you see our disaster supplies, our sheds, how we set up for search and rescue, our incident command center, we have our organization chart where everybody at each campus is assigned certain jobs with respect to the actual drill. In addition to this in the fall, we also ran a uh, um, shelter in place for um, active shooter this year. So that's kind of something else that we did in the fall besides this one. And then we will be planning out spring drills also. So we have all of our auditoriums, uh, multi-purpose rooms, as I mentioned. We are pretty well equipped for our schools, but the first aid and some of our partners, our school sites might become disaster uh, meeting places for the community. Um, I like to kind of call like our school districts are an extension of the community. I think we've become like parks and rec too a little bit. So we have these lovely emergency checklists. These are in every single office and every single classroom. It spans anything from um, what to do for an active shooter, Africanized honeybees, uh, bomb threats, earthquakes. Um, I think our very popular one recently was severe heat conditions. We had that record heat wave, so we also do have procedures when it hits 85 and 95. We have cooling stations at the school sites. As you know, we don't have air conditioning at all of our school sites. But it's really helpful because it is um, something for everybody to refer to and familiarize themselves with. I'm a nurse practitioner with the American Red Cross Disaster Health Services. One of the things we do as nurses is volunteer at community organizations like this. Today we're giving out information on Vial of Life, which is a system to assist the paramedics getting emergency information should they need to call on you at your home. This is a national uh, project. We have information on that. File of Life is a program that uses decals to go on the door of your house and your refrigerator so when the paramedics come they can access emergency information by getting it off the door of your refrigerator or inside. That way they know if you have allergies, emergency contacts, and who your health care provider might be. And today we're also doing blood pressure checks as part of preventative health. And then I am actually going to turn this over to Dale, and he can tell you what his side of the program is. Hi, Dale. Hi, it's Dale Spiegel. We're trying to remind people that one of our favorite programs is the Sound the Alarm program, where for people that need smoke alarms in their homes, we sign people up, we come out as volunteers, uh, install a 10-year alarm you know, where they need it, train people on how to uh, set up a disaster plan, and. So that's one of the things. We've got uh, service to the armed forces where we help people connect with uh, family members and service members abroad. We do uh, help people with disaster planning, put their kits together. We do education. And the biggest thing right now, we need blood donor volunteers. You know, it, you've heard it on the news all the time, but it's really true. There's a real blood shortage. Everybody, find you know, go on the Red Cross. dot org website and you know find a blood donation center near you. That'd be what we'd love you to do. Good afternoon, uh, William Yoga for the Port of Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, today we brought out some of our gear that we use for the uh, dive team and our searches of uh, materials and uh, other things of that nature. Right here we have our our drone that we search uh, aerial. Uh, places of so if you have something that uh, goes down like a, a wreck of a boat we'll put this up and we'll find uh, wreckage and once we find wreckage then we'll say hey this is a good place to start our search we'll move over to our ROV which is our remotely operated vehicle uh, we put this underwater to do the same thing that the drone does up top we put it underwater and then it finds whatever we're looking for and once we find it with this we leave this on station which means it stays there uh, the thing we find, and then we put a diver in, and this is some of the dive gear we use. So we use a standard scuba cylinder with an OTS uh, mask, which has communications topside and in, in, in water communications uh, between the two divers. If we have to be underwater for more than a couple of hours and it's an extended stay, we use, use our, our hard hat. Uh, if you're like me and you're an older diver and you got a bad hip, we have a uh, 
diver propulsion unit. So this propels you underwater so you don't have to kick as hard. Uh, over here we have our jet skis that we use like during the summer for uh, any kind of enforcement, uh, catching uh, bad guys that are trying to outrun us with drugs or anything. We also do searches with these and rescues with these uh, for the breakwater. So in part, that's pretty much all we got for you guys today. Uh, had a good day. Glad you guys came out. Good afternoon. My name is Rosemary Vivero, and I'm the community service liaison for the area of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Today at your fair, we had several things in teaching you emergency preparedness. We had hands-only CPR. We just put those things away, and on the other side, we had uh, teaching the community how to reach, uh, how to uh, use a fire extinguisher. We had emergency information on what to do during fires. We also had a spinning wheel where we were giving the community they would spin the wheel and they could get an emergency backpack, they could get a vest or helmet because our biggest thing with the fire department is to be prepared. Like we say, don't be scared, be prepared. So that is what we're doing to teach you in every kind of emergency or disaster, fire, earthquakes, floods, we're here to help you and to teach you new things. Hands Only CPR is a program that we started probably about five years ago. There were so many breaths that you did per uh, hand. Now what we do, you do not use the breath, all you do is hands only, we just push hard and fast. It's 100 beats per minute or to songs like Staying Alive, so you're going Staying alive, staying alive, ha, 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 ha. So all it is is quick and easy. You, uh, you go up to the person, make sure they're okay, all right. You dial 911 and you start to do the, the hand compressions and that's how we're saving lives. Ready, Set, Go is a program where we teach, especially in the high fire areas, we want you to be ready. Have a backpack, have one in your car, have one in your house, have one at work. Set, it means that once somebody calls time to evacuate, you're set to go. And go, obviously, is get out of the house fast and easy, quick, and you have everything ready just in case you're evacuated. Hi, I'm Tim, and uh, this is my son, Nicholas, with Troop 378 Hi. here in the South Bay. And what he's, are you learning about? He's learning about how to turn on and off the water at the water meter. Very important. Just in case pipe breaks or disaster happens. Bob Clausen from the Peninsula uh, CERT. We're doing the demo out here for the uh, preparedness uh, fair expo. And uh, we have a number of, of, of props here from the gas meter, the water meter, fire extinguishers, sizes, and uh, electrical control panels. So these meters are in the gas valves are inside the house and you have control of these so if you take turn one of these off you can relight the pilot and turn it back on again this one you have to call the gas company all these things are in line you got gas flow now you can turn it horizontal and the gas will be off use your muscles right you gotta use this okay. Now, now it's off, right, if it's straight across. Now your gas to the whole house is off, and any leak that's from the pipe into the house should be uh, now taken care of. The important things uh, for the expo is to introduce people to what is available and what uh, things they can uh, learn just from the expo and carry it on. Uh, for instance, uh, they have cert classes. It takes some dedication, it's 24 hours, usually three days uh, on, on Saturdays, and you learn about a number of things to help your family, because you are going to be the only ones uh, that's going to be there for you. You are the first responder. For all the participants at today's expo and for you viewers watching, you are all taking the steps necessary to learn more about emergency preparedness and what we as a community can do together to be ready. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for Around the Peninsula. See you next time.